Hi everyone. In this video we're going to take a look at doing this kind of an effect which is a sticky texture. So we're using the repro node here and then what we're doing is we are back projecting UVs from the finished model onto the incomplete model. So there's a couple of little tricks to this so I'll show you how you do it. Um, it's all pretty simple though. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, I want uh, one of the new platonics and I want a cube. Then let's just make a mesh network from these two. Uh, so um, I'm going to make a, should I make a grid? No, I'll make a volume and let's try this with 1200 objects. Um, I want a big volume, large volume. Um, maybe what I'm going to do is in fact do this with a transform node. So I'll add a transform node and then I'm going to scale these. So I'll maybe do maybe do this. Turn off scale points. I just want to scale the space. So scale them up and then I'll move them quite high. Just see where the see where the grid is. So let's move them up here. These are these are all gonna fall down basically. So I'm gonna add an ID node. I want them to have kind of um random ID, so let's just go random. So you've got some cubes in there and you've got some platonics. Now let's uh, add some random rotations, so we'll just do that. And then uh, if we just add a dynamics node, this is what we've got. Lots of things falling to the ground. Marvellous. Okay, so Let's um, change a few settings. So let's give ourselves some more friction. And then what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to turn off the ground plane. So on the solver, I'm just going to turn off ground. And then I will create a cube. I'm going to remove the top face from the cube. And then I'm going to move this, move this down. So let's move this around here. And then... Um, Let's make this a bit narrower, maybe a bit wider. Okay, so um, I'm going to position the camera now. So I'm just going to uh, create a new camera here. And um, I am going to give this camera a focal length of, say, 50. Um, move it back. Okay, well, let's, let's say here. Um, um, Right, so if we put the camera here, something like that. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I know I'm just messing around. This will all make sense in a second. Uh, let's drag the cube into the collider object, double click on the cube, and then change its collision shape to mesh. If I hit rewind and play now. All these objects are coming flying through and then they hit the hit the side of the cube if I just change to a back to the original camera okay so um, we've got some um, objects falling through the uh, mesh so what's happening basically is things are landing at the bottom and then the sheer number of points on top of them is um, just pushing them through the other side of the uh, of the mesh just because there's an awful lot of objects so let's just cure that one how I'm going to do that is I'm going to change the collision margin from 0 0.04 to 0 0.1 now if I what I'm going to do is I'll hide this cube and then I'll play back um, so what the collision margin does is it's an area of expansion around the uh, collision shape and if a collision happens inside that shape, are they missing or are they just going back down the side? Okay, if I look at this from the top, no, they're still going through. Okay, so I'll just uh, increase that a little bit more. <clears throat> and if a collision happens within this zone, um, Bullet can make an awful lot of optimizations and it's a kind of a safety margin. Think of it as... Okay, so we're looking good. Looking really good. Okay, great stuff. Sorry, right, okay. So now if I have a look through the post camera, uh, I've got to back up slightly, or something like this, whatever. Okay, now, um, where's this camera? Where's this post one camera? Okay, so the next thing to do is to create a pyramid. 
So I'm going to grab this pyramid and I'm going to put it on top of the camera. I'm going to scale it up just ever so slightly, kind of position it just over where it is. Back this camera here, let's just make sure that this is at zero. And then make sure this is minus 90, and this is 90, just to make sure it's all good. And then this pyramid here, we will drag it into the collision shape. So like so. Now if I rewind and play again, see that when the objects come past, they'll collide with the pyramid above the camera and then not pass through the camera. Okay, so that is great. Let's say that we're happy with our sim as it settles. So that's 200 frames long. So what we do is we grab, um, oh, this is an instance network. It's supposed to be a repro network. So just go to mesh, utilities, switch mesh geometry type, and then this creates a repro mesh. So the mesh. Um, this mesh can be exported as an Alembic, which is what we need to do here. So if you've not done this before, it's cache, Alembic cache, and then uh, export selection to Alembic. And then um, it's just going to use the time slider here. So that's going to be 200 frames. So we go export selection. I have already done this though. So I'm actually going to jump into a new scene rather than make you wait for an Alembic to cache. Um, so if I do that, I'm just going to Go in and we'll go Arnold. Nope, we'll go Alembic Cache, import Alembic, and then that's in here and it's called Sim. So if I just grab this and play, see there is our Sim. Look at that, all of those points leaking away. That wasn't very good of me, was it? Oh, they're just missing the box, aren't they? Ah, well, <laughs> the sim I've just done for you lot was better than this one. So, in fact, actually, it's um, this will show you how I'll show you how to fix a problem with this. Actually, so okay, so this is done, and let's put this two fifty frames. How long is this? Yeah, uh, one fifty. It's one fifty. Okay, so let's um, pretend that we have the same camera. I should have done this in the same project, shouldn't I? <laughs> Um, let's put this on here and then set the 50 mil focal length. And okay, so excellent. Now, um, if uh, we were to um, just project a texture onto this, um, which we could if we wanted to. Uh, so if, um, for example, was to go to the modeling menu sets and just go um, project UV. So um, this would be a plane of projection, uh, Y down. So project from Y axis. And if I just go project, uh, if I look at the top down view, because of all of this leakage, the projection is en enormous. So let's just scale this and move it into the right place. Uh, let's do that. So that puts the projection where we want it. And then uh, with that done, we could then um, go and add a material, which we'll do in a standard shader. And then we can do a file texture on this. And that file texture can be uh, this logo. And then if I hit six, oh, it's sideways. <laughs> so let's just, um, let's, we can rotate the actual projection here. So let's do that. So that would be minus 90. Oh, 90. Okay, so as you can see, this plane of projection is all a bit weird and all a bit broken up. And that's not a viewport thing, that's because it's not right. And the reason it's not right is because if we look from a top down view, in an orthographic window, um, it looks fine. Uh, the problem is perspective. So what you could do is have a an absolutely enormous focal length, like 500, have the camera miles away, have the platonic solids and cubes drop from miles high. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, if you're going to render this from an orthographic camera, then it's it's fine. Um, however, uh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to stick with the sim that we've got. And what we need to do instead is a camera-based camera UV projection. So, um, uh, I will just, I'm just going to go to the node editor here. I want to get rid of that very specific piece of history. So I'm just going to select this um, poly planar pro projection node and I'm just going to delete it. And so we're back to our default UVs. So what I'm going to do instead is I am going to 
do a camera based projection. So if I just do camera based, now you see it's all a little bit weird. And um, this is just, this is one of those things. I don't actually quite understand how camera based projections work. They don't seem to work how I th thought they worked. So I am going to um, guess <laughs> how it should look. Oh, look, that looks pretty good. So I, okay, I just guessed that and it was all right. Um, yeah, that'll, that'll do it for me. It's not quite right, is it? Oh, all right, okay. I see what's going on here. Um, I'm going to undo that. And what I'll do is I'll do a camera based projection again, but I'll do it with the camera in the right position. And then I'm going to manipulate the projection afterwards. I think that works. So let's just do a camera based projection. And then I'm going to go to the material. And I'm going to fix it on the material just because I know. So if I um, just move this over this way and then whoops, move it up a bit. And then I'm going to scale it down. So 1.1, 1.1. Ah, well, you know what? I should have done that first. <laughs> then move it up. Okay, so this is, that will do. Okay, so if I just deselect that, you can see we have the beautiful logo, ta-da. Now, um, I, if I render this, if I get the Arnold oh, Render View up, play, oh, it's black because there's no light. So Arnold, um, lights, let's just create a physical sky because we like the physical sky. So, um, by default, you can see, kind of see the material that's going on here. Now, in the original video that I did, there is no reflection, um, just because uh, I wanted to render it quickly. So, um, if I stop this now and then move out the way, um, on this material here, I'm, I knocked the reflection down to zero, um, which meant that um, the render had this really black lettering, which doesn't look particularly great. Uh, but what I did was I went in here to the file texture and then in the color balance, I just set the offset gain to say something like 0 0.1 or something like that. Um, and then uh, how that looks is not very different. Uh, hold on, let's just resize that. You can see what's going on. So, okay, maybe a bit more. Um, so uh, yeah, now you can see with, with no reflection, uh, the texture is never actually black, perfectly black. So that's um, uh, a way to do that. Uh, so if I was to turn up the intensity on this, say four, um, that's what we get for our render, which is basically what we did. Uh, to get the motion blur, um, I did this in the render settings and it's just um, Arnold render motion blur and you just turn it on and then you get motion blur. Uh, so that'll do that. Um, okay, so that was basically the rendering. However, there's a problem here. So if I was to rewind through this, you see what is going on here, all this very, very odd stuff. So what we need to do is take these UVs from this last frame and we need to bake them effectively onto the geometry. So um, to do that, let's duplicate this, and we'll call this the UV. We'll call this the UV source. Okay. I remember this is our alembic cache, so we can call this um, dynamic. Call that dynamic alembic. Okay. So we've got the UV source over here, and then we've got the dynamic alembic. So um, on the last frame, you notice that their topology is exactly the same. So this UV source. If I hide this and then just look at the source, uh, this does not animate. This is the same for all eternity. And what we do is we grab the UV source, we command click on the Mac or alt click on Linux or Windows and select the dynamic alembic. And then we go to the mesh menu and we go to transfer attributes. Just open this up. I meant to click the option box there. Open this, open up the option box. Uh, just reset this completely. Um, we don't actually need um, the color sets. It's, uh, it's not going to do anything anyway. So we just transfer. And then what this does is it takes the UVs from UV source and puts them onto dynamic alembic. So if we look at this and we play this back, see that if I just uh, select the transfer attributes node, 
some weird things will start to happen. If I step back through frames, you can see it's a little bit weird and jittery and not right. And that's because it's using this um, closest point search method, which is not what we want. We want to use a uh, component. So if I we switch to component method and then um, we step backwards from here, well, if I just skip a few frames, we get the sticky texture just exactly as we would like. So that's because, um, uh, yeah, transfer attributes is not the fastest node in the world. What I'll do is I'll just do a play blast for you all and then we can take a look at that. But effectively, that's it. That's how you do sticky textures in the uh, in the Reaper node. Ah, <laughs> there is a problem here in that I'd sim this with a different camera, so the hole is in a different place. So there's the hole. There's the hole that the camera should be in. So <laughs> um, if I play blast that, if I just skip to the end, actually, uh, I'm gonna need to. Oh, I'm gonna need to make this work. Uh, <laughs> right, let's see where the hole is. Should have just stuck in the other project. Um, okay, let's let's pretend that's that. Okay, I'm gonna come back in a second when this has play blasted. So there's the play blast. Here's the video. Um, I don't actually know why I play blasted it, given that I rendered it. <laughs> So um, yeah, that's it. That's that's the trick. Um, I hope you find this useful and I will see you next time.